Hello Rocket fans and welcome back to the Copenhagen Suborbital's Rocket Shop where we continue working on the world's only crewed, crowd-funded space rocket, Spica. Now, we've showed you a lot of the development that went into building these stainless steel propellant tanks for the Spica rocket and you can see many of those videos on our channel if you're new here. But one of the things we haven't talked about is how do we manage to make the welds inside of the propellant tanks to attach the bulkhead to the cylinder of the tank once we only have a very tiny opening left in the bulkhead. So in today's video, let's go inside our propellant tanks and do some weld inspection. All right, let's turn on the lights. Now that we are inside the tank, you're basically seeing the perspective of our welding torch. You are stationary and the entire propellant tank is rotating around you like a drum of a washing machine. And of course, making this 170 kilogram propellant tank rotate like it is, called for making a specialized tool for the job. Perhaps you remember the automated long seam welder that we made to weld the vertical seam of our tanks, turning our rolled stainless steel plates into cylinders? Well, it turned out we could modify our long seam welder to have dual functionality and act as a controlled and precise way of rotating the tanks for bulkhead welding as well. But that, of course, solves only part of the problem of making these inner welds. Since we couldn't access the inner seam with our hands, the biggest challenge was controlling the position and height of the welding torch while the propellant tanks were spinning. The shape of the tanks is slightly irregular in places since we rolled them by hand, which means welding with the torch set in a fixed position would result in open gaps between the bulkhead and the tank cylinder, and that's not really what you want when handling liquid oxygen and other propellants. But here's where John stepped in to design and build a two-axis robot arm that could make these welds possible for the speaker rocket, or call it three-axis if you count the whole rig that spins the tanks, which John also played a hand in building. With these three degrees of motion and some clever automation, we were able to produce these beautiful 9-meter welds on both of our liquid oxygen and ethanol tanks. And as we showed already when pressure testing these tanks to over 30 bar, the welds did not sprung a single leak. So in essence, we are really happy about how this development turned out. Each of these TIG welding passes is about 3 meters long and we performed a total of 3 passes on each seam to remove any sharp edges between the main bead and the two mating surfaces. Otherwise, those sharp edges can become areas of increased stress concentration, potentially leading to unwanted plastic deformation or crack propagation. Soon we will use the same or similar tools and techniques to produce a few smaller propellant tanks for our BPM-100 rocket engine test stand. Its static frame has recently been finished by receiving the last coat of paint actually. Only the dynamic part of the frame is left to finish, but we are already working on it as well. The dynamic frame will allow us to easily exchange different size propellant tanks for the static fires, and this modularity will save us a lot of pressurization gas during those shorter duration engine burns. So stay tuned for those and even more developments coming from our rocket shop. That is all for now, so as always, thank you for watching and supporting. If you don't want to miss any of our future updates, make sure to subscribe and ring the bell so we can see you next time when we get one step closer to space. The reason we're getting so close to reaching space on our speaker rocket is because all of our crowdfunding supporters. If you enjoy watching these insider videos on building a space program and you would like to become an even bigger part of it, you can help us out by going over to our website www.copsum.com and becoming a supporter with a small monthly or one-time donation. We all do this for free in our spare time, so you'd be surprised how much every little bit helps. And thank you if you feel like what we do and share is interesting.